Okay, we were a little late starting the recording, but it's okay. All right, so come up to standing and just take a, a little a little wider stance. Shake your arms. Bend your knees a little bit. And let's just start uh, moving, moving your body. Deep, in, deep inhale through the nose. And let the, let the arms, the hands touch the body. Let them touch your body as they swing around you. Taking that deep breath, just feeling the morning, the beginning of your day, and the blessing of the presence of yourself and others. We're going to take this into the pushing hands with that um, quick little exhale out the mouth like you're blowing out a candle. So whenever you're ready, Five, four, three, two, one, and slowly coming back. Deep breathing. And slowly let the body come back to being a little more still. Notice what the arms and the legs feel like. Let's dip the feet together and we'll do the quick uh, little inhales through the nose, the exhale out the mouth. It can be an audible exhale. So there are three fast inhales with your hands and fists to begin. So you're gonna be like When you come down this time, you're going to stay down and the arms will begin to slow down. Again, you're breathing deeply. All right, let's inhale halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, come all the way up. Arms can go overhead. Exhale your hands back in front of your heart. Relax both arms. Drop your intention inside again. And then relax that. And step the feet a little wider. Take your hands. And let's just uh, palpate across the top of the pelvis, the crest of your pelvis. Sometimes I like um, listening to Eric Franklin. I don't know if you know him. He's like a body worker, anatomist. Let me see. I can hardly hear Lynn. Oh no. Let me see if I can turn the volume up. Is there such a thing? Let's look. The saying is good on my end. Oh, the volume's good on your end? Cool. Thank you for letting me know. It's up quite high, so. It's we'll good here too. Okay, cool. So maybe if you're having problems with volume, you might check your own setting. Um, just to make sure that your own volume is up. <laughs> but at any rate, if you can't hear me, you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> so I'm, I'm taking my hands and just coming across the crest of the pelvis. And, and if that bothers your thumbs, you can use your fists and just come across, just start palpating that area across the top of the pelvis. And there's those hip points, the ASIS, you can feel those. 
So we're waking the body up a little bit. We're going to take fists and just begin to bring a little pressure into the outer hips. Yeah, like that. So pressure along the outer hips. The outer hips maybe around the front to just inside the soft belly there. Okay, out and back to the glutes. Getting this sense of where am I in space? Where's my body? Feel those hip points again. Back out to the sides, down towards, oh, there's probably right above the greater trochanter, behind the greater trochanter. Maybe feels different from side to side, the front of the greater trochanters. And then you can feel like, right, where are the greater trochanters? Lynn, I have no idea. So usually they're, they're right around that area that maybe dips in slightly at the outer hips. That's where they are. Sometimes you can palpate a little around the backs, even if you're not touching the bone, the tops and the fronts. And you get this sense of the front of the greater trochanter, where's your hip point? We all have a different height pelvis. One more time, I'm gonna go up here, the crest of my pelvis, wake this up. Wake it up. Okay. All right, and then let the arms dangle. Let's take the feet wider apart. Turn the feet out slightly. Inhale your arms halfway. And exhale, bend both knees. Knees are going toward the, pointing toward the toes. Not past the ankles. Hands can come down to the tops of the thighs. I'm gonna lean into my um, thighs. Take the knees wide apart. Take a deep inhale. Exhale, press into your left hand as you rotate and turn a little towards the right. Take another deep breath there. Your next exhale, turn back to center. Again, pelvis comes down a little bit. I'm gonna let the shoulders shrug up towards my ears. Just breathe deeply. One more deep breath in. Exhale, let's twist the other way. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, just deep breathing. Lengthening out the inner thighs. And then we're going to um, inhale, straighten both legs. Inhale, take the arms straight ahead. Clasp your hands. Draw the palms toward you. Press the arms out wide. Yeah. Inhale, lift both arms. Exhale, take the arms wide. Fingernails drawing back. Relax both arms. Inhale, take the arms out. Exhale, bend both knees. Inhale, bring the hands forward. Exhale, change the clasp, draw it towards you. Press the hands away using your breath. Lift both arms. Find the heels as well. Inhale, straighten the legs, release the clasp. One more time, inhale the arms out. Exhale, let's bend both knees, knees wide. Hands come toward each other, change the clasp, inhale, draw, exhale, press, inhale, lift the arms, exhale, rise, release the arms. Oh, we gotta do one more. Inhale the arms out, exhale, knees wide, hands toward each other, clasp, change. Inhale, draw them toward you, exhale, press them away. We'll find the sit bones, Inhale, lift both arms. Exhale, straighten both legs and release the arms. Good. Let's make the feet parallel. <clears throat> and if you need your blocks, we're going to take wide legged forward fold. Let's start with the hands up on the hips again. So we feel that top of the pelvis again. 
Let's lift at the top of the breastbone. Maybe lift the gaze, if it's all right with the neck. Exhale, start to bow forward. All right, and then the hands are gonna come down to either blocks or the floor. Then you're gonna walk your hands forward, downward dog arms. Can you balance the weight between the heel and the ball of your foot in this wide-legged forward fold with downward dog arms? Balance the weight between the heel and the ball. Can both legs be straight? Straighten both of your legs. And notice where your breathing is. Where do you feel the breath moving in your body? And also just dropping back in and taking a moment, a moment to just once again, remember the millions and millions of things that are happening in your body right now. The millions of things that come together, mesh together, move together in order for you to take another breath of air. And then let's walk the hands back. Shift them up to your hips. Inhale, come up to standing. All right, let's step the feet back together. Inhale, lift both arms tip to the sky. And exhale your hands back in front of your heart. Relax both arms. And step the feet slightly wider, so almost as wide as the outer hips. This is the outer hips. Inhale, lift your right arm. And exhale, side bend to your left. Notice, where, where's the sensation when you take this side bend in your body? Inhale, rise back up. The exhale, release. Your next inhale, lift your left arm up. Your exhale, you start to side bend. Inhale, rise up. Maybe it felt different on that side. Relax both arms. One more time, inhale, lift both arms. And exhale, your hands back in front of your heart. All right, let's relax the arms, grab your blocks, and take a wide stance. <clears throat> We're gonna take side angle pose. So you might want a block or two at your right outer shin, depending on what's going on in your body today. But today is a different day. I think sometimes we get so rooted in how our body felt the day before, or you know, some chronic thing we have going on. Let's try to just expand that thinking slightly and really get more in touch with like what's happening today and what's moving, what's not moving, and how can I put my felt sense into these places and see if I can create some change. So right foot's turned all the way out. The front, the back foot's turned slightly in. Inhale, take the arms out. And exhale, side angle. So from the crest of the pelvis that you were palpating earlier, reach all the way into your outer heel on, that, on the back leg side. And also expand through the side ribs on the skyward side of your body. Deep breathing, keep your breath moving, millimeter by millimeter also in your body. How do you create some change, some awareness?
And then with your next inhale, let's come up. Exhale, release. Spin the feet the other way. Inhale, the arms out. And exhale, side angle. So what happens, even as you, if you reach down into the, the, the left heel, the front leg heel, balance the weight all the way through that hip joint, lengthen from the crest of the pelvis where you were palpating earlier, all the way into the outer heel of the back leg, lengthen through the side ribs, Turning the heart up a little towards the sky. And then with your next inhale, go ahead, rise up. Exhale, release both arms. Step the feet back together. And bring the hands to the, the hip points. So these are the ASIS these hip points. Okay. Greater trochanter, where is it? Where's your greater trochanter? Can you palpate right above it? And you, and you might even know, like I, I notice on my own body, it's like, wow, one side is kind of tender. One side isn't. Interesting. And then I'm going to come around a little to the front. And I, I'm interested a little bit in the space between the hip point and the front of those greater trochanters, those outer hips. Okay, and I can also remember that, that the hip joint itself is between pubic bone, and it's about halfway between pubic bone and that hip point, and a little up. So there's where, so I can kind of move one knee and go, okay, so that's my my hip joint, my inner hip joint. We do the other side. I want this awareness of where are my hips and how can I move my hips separate than moving my pelvis, right? So my, hip, my legs moving, my pelvis is pretty stable. And then back to center. Then let's step the feet a little wider, so about as wide as your mat, both feet pointing straight ahead. Bend both knees. You're coming into this stance where you're going to have forearms above the knees. I even have my feet slightly wider than my, my yoga mat. Press into that meaty part of the forearm for a moment. And just notice the space. Is your, is your pubic bone in the middle? Is the distance between the right pubic bone and the right inner thigh the same as the distance between the left pubic bone and the left inner thigh. As, is the pubic bones, are they on midline? What's the space like between the pubic bone and that, that hip point, the ASIS? How are those different from right to left or not? And if I notice on one side, you know, with my awareness, I go, wow, that is different over there. What is going on there? Can I bring, if the pubic bone, is it in midline? We just gotta get curious about these things. All right, then we're gonna straighten the legs and come all the way up. Bring the feet back toward each other. Now we bring them hip distance. We remember hip distance is where the, the inner hip, the hip joint is. And we're gonna take Vrikshasana tree pose. We're gonna stand on the right leg first. If you wanna be close to a wall, you could stand with the left side of your body close to the wall. 
And, um, but otherwise, if you want to stand in the middle of the mat, that's fine. Let's remember the space. We're going to stand on the right leg. So between the greater trochanter and the inner side of the standing leg, we're going to bring those toward each other. All right, so when you're ready, start to shift the weight to the right. So even there, you just barely unweight. And just notice if you found yourself going out, and I want you to draw that outer greater trochanter in towards the midline. Keep it in midline. Unweight the left foot and bring it up. Now you've got greater trochanter to inner thigh to foot, possibly, arms wide, maybe up by the ears. Can the gaze be straight ahead? And then release the foot, release the arms. Shift the weight to the left. Find that, that whole tone to midline. Unweight the other foot. Arms release, leg, center. All right, let's have your um, blocks uh, available. They can come out at the top of your mat. And then with your next inhale, lift both arms. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway up, lengthening the front of the spine. Exhale, let's step the right foot back. So now from on the back leg, from the, that ASIS, that hip point, lengthening all the way towards the front of the greater trochanter. Can you get a sense of that space? You might come to fingertips. Reach down into your front heel. Inhale, let's come up right. Now we can get, bring some awareness again into the front of the right hip. You can either take the arms wide or lift them. And once again, can you drop back into this most amazing, this most amazing body that you occupy Inhale, take the arms out. Exhale, downward facing dog. You can have hands on blocks if you like, or hands on the ground. Taking another deep inhale with your exhale and step the right foot forward. So we want to be present, or maybe this is me wanting, wanting us to be present in, in our bodies, 
to really notice what's happening within the body. So as you reach into the front heel, and can you go from, you feel when you press into the front heel, you might feel the back of the right hamstring turn on. Can you reach all the way back into the back leg and then come upright? Lifting the torso and lifting the arms. And the heart. What happens when you reach all the way through your fingers? Your next inhale, take the arms wide. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, step to plank. Inhaling in your plank pose. Let's exhale, lightly touch the knees down. Bring your chest down. Reach back through your, your legs, your inner thighs, and inhale, lift into Cobra. Exhale, lower. Inhale to all fours. And this exhale, take child's pose. You're welcome to stack the hands, or use a block. Your body is a miracle. Again, Trillions upon trillions of successful cellular operations, metabolic processes, and moment-to-moment -moment responsiveness. Then please go ahead and lift yourself back up. You're gonna walk yourself forward. There's all fours. Inhaling deeply in all fours and exhale, let's come to downward facing dog or puppy pose. So as you strongly reach from your shoulder blades to the upper arm bones, through the core of your arm, all the way to your finger pads, and take your rib cage the other way, take your rib cage towards your pelvis. With your next inhale, lift your right leg. Come up on the ball of your left foot and step your right foot forward. Hands can be on blocks or the floor. Inhale, come up right. Inhale, the arms back out. Exhale, plank. And downward facing dog. Inhale, lift the left leg from your left inner thigh. Lift the left leg, come on the ball of the right foot. Exhale, left foot forward.
Again, hands can be either on the floor or on your blocks. Finding the strength that moves through the body. How does this move from the front heel all the way back to the back inner thigh so that then you feel some stability as you begin to rise? Inhale, take the arms out. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, step forward. And exhale, bow. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Releasing your head in this Uttanasana. Release the head, release the neck. Let's see if we're all still together here. In your forward fold. Yeah. Okay, great. Beautiful. And then let's inhale, come all the way up. And exhale your hands back in front of you. And relax both arms. All right. Can we can we transition ourselves to half moon? So if you want to be half moon with a wall, you're welcome to to do that. Otherwise, let's take it from Tadasana. We were we practiced that at some point, right? And so if I want to do that, I'm going to take one of my thoughts. And I'm going to put it tall. Some of you might even like having, you know, two blocks tall. Can you see the blocks? <laughs> but at any rate, there is a block and it's, it's, out, it's out there. It's a little bit away from me. It's not, not right by my foot. Let's see if you can actually see it. There it is. Okay. All right, so if you're gonna stand on your right foot first, your right foot first. And so I'm gonna just take the, this left leg is a little behind you. And when you're ready, you begin to pick up the back foot to lower yourself down. Check your front foot. Is it pointing straight ahead? You could take left hand on your hip. Okay, you're reaching through this standing leg. Very similar to your um, tree pose standing leg. But then you also have your other leg lifted and it is strong as well. Reach back through the ball of the lifted leg. Start to turn the heart and maybe lift the arm. Deep breathing. Standing leg is straight. You might feel the heat in the standing leg. And then you're gonna to begin to bend the front knee Start to lower the back leg and come all the way up. I, I mean, you can even just take a moment of just a feeling a sense of gratitude, no matter what, right? No matter if you were like, had like super balanced or whatever, just the, the whole act of of what we ask our, our bodies to do, to inform us. All right, so second side. And so the foot is turned all the way out. 
And just begin to shift the weight to the standing leg, pick up the back leg. Sometimes I have to check my front foot. It likes to do a little dance. Right hand up on the hip. And then are you able to reach? Can you reach from the, the greater trochanter toward the core of the leg so that you're really standing over that whole center of your leg? And on the lifted leg, can you tone the adductors? Again, both the standing leg, lifted leg, inner thighs are toned to the inside of that leg. Turn the torso. Lift the arm. Really strong, I know. It's tricky. A lot of heat. And then you'll bend the front knee and lift yourself back up. Okay. And standing. Okay, great. Can we take um, a strap? Can you grab a strap and make a loop in it? Let's see here. Yes, and the, the size of this loop. Let's make it a little narrower than the upper arms. Just slightly narrower than the upper arms. Okay, and then you're gonna take the strap behind you Place the hands inside it, palms facing each other. All right, so pressing out on the strap. Start to lift through the top of your breastbone. Start to broaden toward the collarbones. Still, but yeah. Jackie wants to remind us what's happening with ribs one, two. Can you lift ribs one and two in the front? Up, up towards the throat. When, when you did that, did you keep that breastbone lifted? And as you reach the elbows back and the arms back. What about the, the heart center, the energetic heart center? Where is it? Can you give it a, a slight lift, just a slight lift? So again, feel, do you feel what's happening through the arms? Do you feel some heat? What's happening? Another deep breath. And then exhale, release. And you might notice, what do the arms feel like after that? Sometimes it reminds me, oh, right, my arms. Can they be an expression that also comes from my heart? And even now that I'm unable to, to reach out and really touch everyone, you know, and, and shake hands with people. And I still remember that now, where does that expression come from? Where's that tenderness come if it's not going to be through the physical touch of one hand to another? Where does that come from? Can it come from, you know, the expression in my eyes? 
in my face. Let's take one more deep inhale. And then with your next exhale, take the hands and put them on your heart. Put them on that heart. And then we'll release both arms. Great. We're going to come down to the ground. When we come to the ground, we want to have two blocks available and our strap available. So we're going to come down and we're going to take um, bridge pose. If you like, you might, you might enjoy taking um, one of your blankets to go underneath your shoulders. We're going to take a supported bridge. So I'm going to get my blanket all unwrinkled as possible. And I want to know where my blocks are. I want to know where my strap is. The loop in my strap. I kind of like the size it is. That's probably going to work for me. When you lie down, I like using a blanket. You don't have to. If you do use a blanket, I like it because it gives me a little more lift through the space of uh, my heart. So I'm lying back. I've got my shoulders on the blanket. I want the shoulders to stay on the blanket the whole time. I even have, I've got a little space between my shoulder and the edge of my blanket. I've got my blocks here somewhere. There they are. I'm going to pick up the, the pelvis and place one block under the pelvis and maybe another block. And, and I set that up and I kind of check into that. Is it under the bony pelvis? Is it under my sacrum and my bony pelvis? And how does that feel? That might feel just right. Or some of you might go, oh, I want, I want a little more height, Lynn. And you might go just a tiny bit higher with that block, the second block. For some of us, that'll be right, the right thing to do. And some of us, it'll be like, oh, no, that's not right. Listen to your body. Now, the strap goes between your feet and your blocks. You go back into the loop. Palms are facing the midline. Gaze is not at the camera. Your gaze is going to be at about a 45 degree angle, kind of toward the space just above your heart. Now, remember that little lift you did of your heart when you had the arms behind you? Can you once again? Lift at the top of your breastbone, all the way out to the collarbones. Can you, and then inside, without shoving the heart, you're not going to shove the heart forward. You're just going to get a slight lift of your heart. As if somebody has their hand behind your heart. They're there, they're supporting you. Feet are parallel. I'm lengthening out my inner thighs toward my knees and down to my heels. And I might stay right here. There's a lot of a rich experience even here. Or you might lift one knee, then the other, and just take this leg straight up. If the legs don't go straight up, right, some of you, like maybe Michael, you might want to have the knees just bent and just have the thighs lifted so it doesn't strain the lumbar spine. But am I still, even once I lifted my legs, if I chose that, what happened in the space of my heart?
What's happening in your body right now? What's the quality of your breathing? Do you feel the strength at the backs of the arms to help you? Do you know that there is support for you? That, that there, there's support for you, even if it's not in your physical presence right now. Enliven the toes, if they're up towards the sky. If you have your feet on the floor, are you still reaching out your inner thighs? You still feel your heels. And then if our legs are up, we're gonna bend the knees. Bring the toes back down. Take the hands out of the strap. Let's lift the pelvis off of one block if we have two and just rest it down onto one so we can join those who are just on one block. And then we'll pick up the pelvis again Move that block and then can you start to migrate towards your head a little bit so that the blanket, if you have a blanket, is going under your pelvis. Let's keep the, the feet on the ground, the knees bent, and rest here. Arms might go out kind of like a cactus. And we don't want to miss this opportunity. The opportunity right now in the present of just after the effort that you just put forth, the opportunity to feel your body, to be present, We could also look at it through the analogy of the opportunity. What is the opportunity now? How do I want to be? How do I want to, to move through my life? All right, and we're gonna roll over to one side. Use your arms and push yourself up. Okay, great. Can we take puppy pose or downward dog for a moment? While you're here, can you feel, you feel the ground underneath your finger pads and knuckles? Toes and the balls of the feet. And even if the heels don't touch the earth, are you reaching evenly through both the inner and the outer heel? Exhale, let's go ahead, lower both knees. Inhale on all fours. Exhale, child's pose. And then we'll walk back up. All right, we're going to take a Bhadra Javasana, a twist. In this twist, let's take um, one of your blankets, let's see here. Let's fold it into kind of a squarish shape. And you're gonna be kind of on the point of that square. And you might, you know, some of you want, might want more height than that. Let's sit with your left sit bone cheek up on that square. Your, your right leg's kind of in Varasana. 
and your left foot is coming to the front of that knee. Hmm, let's take our strap. We have that strap, remember? You're gonna take your strap and um, you can make the loop a little smaller. And can you put it around your left foot and then take the tail of your strap and put it alongside your right outer hip. Then you're gonna reach your left arm behind you to grab onto the strap, way over by your right outer hip, and begin to turn towards your left. So your, your, um, your right hand might be at the top of the left thigh. Your left sip, I mean right sip bone, let it become lighter as you twist. Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> mm. And then let's exhale, come back to center. Yeah, a lot going on there today, what I feel. <laughs> Second side. Oh, so now the left leg goes kind of towards Varasana-ish. And the other foot is just at the inner knee. If you wanna add the strap, the strap's going around your right foot. The tail goes around the left side of your body, and then your right hand, thumb down, reaches all the way around behind you to grab onto the strap. And then the opposite hand comes to the top of the thigh. All right, begin to keep lengthening out the top of the left thigh. The, the left sit bone gets lighter. The heart lifts up. We're gonna keep the gaze lifted up and looking off to the right. Another deep inhale. Exhale, you're gonna come back to center. Take the strap away. Let's take uh, both legs at straight ahead. So like a Dandasana legs. You can still be sitting up on that little point if you like. Take your hands and give your knees and the legs some attention there. Yeah, okay, hands behind you, fingers pointing towards your feet. To move my blanket a little, lift through the heart, a little bit of Dandasana. And then we'll exhale, release that. Very good, okay. Let's take your blanket that you're sitting on and let's fold it in that lengthwise like that. And you're going to come down to the ground and you might lie back and then put the, the pelt, slide the blanket under your pelvis. And then bring both of your knees up and take your hands behind your knees, on the hamstrings, behind the knees. Wherever that is, the knees don't, they don't need to be perfectly straight. If you can straighten your legs, fine. Just some deep breathing. Mm. 
And then let's take the hands to the backs of the calves, shins, lower back legs there. Bend both knees, kind of like happy baby. But let's bring the knees a little closer to midline. Let's, let's bring the attention into the lumbar spine. Even if you can have the hands at the little toe or just the backs of the calves, bring your attention to the back of your sacrum, the back of your pelvis, and just notice like when your knees are close, what's it like at the back of the sacrum pelvis? When you take the knees a little wider, what happens back at the sacrum pelvis? What's the right distance for you today? And then let's bring the feet back to the ground. Pause with the feet on the floor for a moment again. And then lift your pelvis off of your blanket and then scoot the blanket down to go underneath the knees, thighs and come into Shavasana. Make your Shavasana comfortable. We're going to take Shavasana and then we'll, we'll come up for a short pranayama. So coming into your resting Shavasana pose. And again, I'll share with you the, the reading. If you've ever wondered what a miracle is, I am here to tell you based on abundant personal experience, your body is a miracle. As a human participating consciously in an embodied life, your physical being represents literally trillions upon trillions of successful cellular operations, metabolic processes, and moment to moment responsiveness occurring at rates that boggle the mind. We really ultimately have no clue what makes you tick. And it's not just you, your neighbors, family, friends and strangers alike, all share with you in this great miracle this gift beyond appraising. As something shared by all, I find that the study of our human form gets underneath every vying modality, every ideology, every persuasion. Every one of us benefits from a deeper understanding of the human form. Sharing that with the world we reach across and connect beyond every imagined barrier.
So with gratitude and this understanding that millions of things come together, mesh together, breathe together in order for you to take this next deep breath. And as you begin to awaken your body to more movement, just by bringing the fingers or the toes, mindfully transitioning yourself to one side. And using the support of your arms to come back up to sitting. As you come back up to sitting and close your eyes, just take the next few moments to practice your box breathing. So if you inhale for a count of four, suspend for a count of four, exhale four, suspend the exhale for four, and just do this for the next few moments. And then after your next exhale, release any control on your breath. together in front of your heart. And just remembering every one of us benefits from a deeper understanding of the human form. Can we share that with the world and reach across and connect beyond every imagined barrier? Namaste. Thank you, everyone. Let me check the, I'm going to stop this recording. I just want to check the chat box because I know that sometimes I miss.